There's one hand there, I have to take her first, then you, and then you, and then you. Um, so I've been reflecting a lot since the other day, and what I've been noticing is that every important pivotal change or decision I've made in my life never came from my mind. It was this instant knowing. Um, and I get stuck in my mind a lot with little things like, do I clean this first or that first? And I get crazy, I can't decide, but getting married, having a child, moving, no problem, knowing. So I'm Am I correct in that that is hearing the impulse of my soul? Or is that something else? Generally, when there is a very soft, almost imperceptible yes, which doesn't have to push its way through, which is not loud and demanding and pushing, then you know that it's that very, very solid and quiet knowing, that is how the soul impulses the system. The impulse I'm sensing is that I have something that wants to be shared with other people who have the brain chemistry that I have, the brain wiring, but then is wanting to go out and teach other people with autism a way to inhabit their bodies since I've done it from being in that place, is that ego or even though it feels like it's a soul impulse to share that? You just have to ask the question. Okay. Quiet your mind, quiet the thinking and ask the question. And if you're unsure, then go with how you would go otherwise and again train yourself and again train yourself. It is a sadhana. It's a it, practice, yeah. so you need practice to practice a practice, you know. Right, okay, and as you were just saying to other people, I, the worst that could happen You make a mistake, go yeah. fearlessly. One has to be fearless also. This is a, this is a, this is not a practice, oh, now I've reached the soul, now I have a halo around my head and I'm walking, floating on the earth. No, it's a, it's a flowy, beautiful, amazing thing to know, even just to know it that the soul impulses me. My master, my, my antar guru is impulsing me even just to know that. It's such a sweetness. It's just sweetness. And then from that sweetness, from that love, you proceed inward. If you want to terrorize yourself, you can, but then it's the ego. Okay, so the terrorizing myself would be questioning doing it. It feels like the soul too is much, just too much, too much of questioning. Yeah. Surrender, surrender, surrender. And, and when you say to Ben, and I've yes. spoken to some of your people here, and they say to ask you the physical movement that I should do. For men, it's the Sashtanga Namaskar. It's just lying flat out with your hands out in receptive state, actually receiving what is to be received. You know, especially in the West, when do you bend down? For what? I mean, one doesn't even bend down to clean the floor anymore. For almost nothing. It's a very ancient practice of humility in the material, physical, even to do it in front of your partner, to do it in front of your, your altar, to do it in front of your children, who, wherever, actually, in front of all beings. That's the posture, it's just surrender. It's like in the, in the Catholic Church, the priests, they put their hands out and they lie with the forehead touching the ground. It's similar to that, but here it's stretched outward. And it's just receiving for men and for women, they go into the, into the kneeling posture, which you'll see everywhere in India when they go down on their knees in the temples and so on, or in and front of the gurus. Always open because you're in a receiving state, in a state of humility, you know. Whatever this has to receive, let it receive. Mm -hmm. And is, is it okay to share this with other people? 
uh, or does it need to come directly through you? I feel surrender as a posture is everyone's birthright. It's not something one can put a copyright on. What we say in, at least in, in Guru Vada, we say that whenever you have received something from a Guru and when you pass it on to someone else, you acknowledge the Guru from whom you have received it. Mm -hmm. But it's not a copyright or something that you have to take permission. It's simply a posture of acknowledgement because if you, if you transmit something acknowledging it, then the power of the one who brought it is included in that transmission. Wonderful. And it's beautiful to do that. Why would one not want to do that? Except so, if the ego is trying to impose itself, in which case you won't be able to transmit it anyhow. You know? So would there be anything wrong in a yoga class that I teach to bring this up as a way of doing child's pose, but uh, with the awareness of surrender that has been brought through you and just having the hands open? Yes, you can. Okay. It will help the other to move into a state of surrender, but what is very, very crucial is that you first solidify these experiences within yourself. You cannot transmit an experience unless you solidify it and you actually experience it. That's the important thing. Yeah, I'll start. Thank you. Um, yes, you first. No. I'll, there are some few in line. 